Welcome to the Kenan Avon Canal. Avon Canal. <laughs> We're always looking to try out new travel experiences for you and here's one that we couldn't turn down. Traveling on a 69 foot narrow boat for the whole weekend. We've never done anything like this before and we've got lots to contend with. Including a toddler being near water for three days, sailing a boat by ourselves, navigating waterways with locks, and sleeping in one area. If that wasn't enough of a challenge, let's throw the in-laws into the mix and see if it's all plain sailing or a Titanic disaster. Reverse, reverse. The canals of England are 300 years old. Back then, they were the motorways of the land and carried commercial goods around the country. Horsepower was needed until the 1880s when motorised barges became popular. As the railways and then motorways were invented, the slower waterways stopped being trade routes and are now places of leisure or a home. Today, 6,000 boats on the canals are registered as permanent residences. We're doing a three-day cruise from Hilperton Marina near Trowbridge. We're going to be sailing through Wiltshire and into Somerset to the Roman city of Bath. It should take a day and a half to get there and the same to get back. Now, we didn't do too much prep for this and we probably should have. A few days before, we were trying to work out where to stop and it wasn't as easy as we thought. Use canalplan.org.uk to choose your route. That helped a lot. I put in short sections so I could break it down. I still feel out of my depth. Let me give someone a call. Robbie Cumming has his own show on the BBC. He's also a narrowboat YouTuber and vlogs his travels along the waterways of England. He should be able to help. Really simple question, how do I make it go? Right, uh, there's a accelerator here, usually, and you just want to go that way. Okay? Don't go that way, go that way. <laughs> What's it like when you're actually manoeuvring around the canals? Is it quite easy to move around, like the steering, and people are quite nice when you go past them, or uh, uh, in the, uh, coming up to a lock? It does vary, you know? Um, some people have just had a bad day, so yeah, they won't be as friendly. You might bump into a few things, but if you concentrate, look ahead, look ahead, see where you're going, and be wary of other boaters, and pa pass port to port, uh, so that's going on the right side of the canal, then you should be, should be fine, just enjoy it. That is an important part of it, which side of the canal to actually um, sail on. Do you think it'll be a, a chilled trip for us, or do you think it'll be a little bit stressful, or how do you think it'll go? I mean, you've got all your family with you, uh, so you're, if you're good at organising them and they'll actually listen to you, you should be all right. You should work as a team and it'll be great fun. Love it. Thank you very much, Robbie. Thanks for your time. I'll let you get back to your sailing. You're welcome. Thanks, dude. Cheers. We've uploaded Robbie's full interview so you can hear all of his tips for first timers. Don't worry, you don't need to phone Robbie up before your trip. We had everything explained to us before we set up. First, how the inside of the boat works, and then how to sail, steer, and use the locks. There are also loads of great videos on YouTube. The Canal and River Trust have some really good ones. That way you'll know what to expect before you arrive. A big thank you to ABC Boat Hire for making this happen. Let's see what you get on one of their boats. This is our home for the next couple days. It's called the Yellow Warbler and it's an eight person narrowboat. Starting off, we've got the lounge, which actually converts into a double bed over here. We've got the kitchen, which has a fridge, microwave, all the function bits of a kitchen that you need, fully stocked, lots of hidden storage. We've got another bathroom over here with a shower, a double bedroom here. This is mine and Jude's bed. I had to sleep with him to know where he was at all times. <laughs> a 
And we've got the kids' room, which is two single beds over here, which they love and have made their own. Back here, we've got another bathroom and a proper bedroom. It's got two single beds. Nan and Granddad have been pushed back here so they have a little bit of privacy in their own bathroom. But two of the rooms have TVs, and then we finished with a lovely balcony on the edge of the boat. Let me introduce you to these two. This is Bill and Joy, but I usually call them Mum and Dad. They were a tactical invite on our part, as we thought there'd be points where we might both be needing to do locks and Jude would need to be looked after. But it's also a chance to spend some quality time with them and try out a multi-generational trip. We set off from Hilperton at 5pm and we were aiming to get to Bradford-on-Avon for dinner and more up overnight. Have you decided who's captain? This is the captain. Are you sure? Only on paper because I'm actually not captaining, so I don't feel it's fair that so are you... I, I've taken the role of captain, as then I tell everyone what to do. <laughs> he's really skippering. <laughs> well, who's the captain? I just need to know. He's are you? Are you? He's the captain. <laughs> I'm the captain. Yeah. No, I. Are you? Are you? Are you handing it over? I'm handing over. No. The captain. I think the well, captain. Oh, there oh. we go. All oh, right. So then that makes. Hey, look at that. If, wait a minute, if he is captain, what does that make him? First mate. First yeah, mate? Yeah, first mate. First, first mate. mate. Alright, there we go then. So, I want to be captain again. <laughs> do I, how long do I have to wear this for? The whole time. <laughs> this stretch was meant to be a nice easy start to the trip with no big obstacles. These narrow boats aren't as easy as we thought to steer though. The hardest thing is trying to judge, unlike a car, where you get an immediate reaction with the boat you're guessing and just allowing, thinking right, when it gets there. So I just realised we just avoided that crash. Yeah. But by them and helped by the people on the side. And you got your skip hat on. I know. This will have to be removed. <laughs> so it looks like you're a pro. <laughs> Do you know I forgot I had it on? <laughs> <laughs> that just made it actually look easy. Uh, might have almost crashed the boat just then. It's harder than you think to just keep it in the middle. It looks so simple. But a slight movement can really take you off. <laughs> oh dear. We were aiming to go through the first lock tomorrow, but we didn't spot a place to moor up until the lock came into view. We'd let a couple of boats pass us and they could see we weren't very experienced. So when we got to the lock and there was a traffic jam, they let us go straight in because I think they knew we were going to get into everyone's way and slow everyone down even more. We panicked a bit when we were told we were going straight into the lock, as we were planning on building up to it. But the volunteers from the Canal and River Trust were there to help and we didn't have to do a thing, apart from steer into the lock. What's a lock, I hear you ask? Well, it's how you can go up and down hills on a boat. If you're at the bottom, you'll need to bring the water down by opening the paddles. Once level, you'll be able to open the gate and lock the boat inside. Now you need to open the paddles from the top gate. This will lift the boat so it rises to the higher ground. Once the lock is full, you can open the gate and continue on. If it's a steep hill, you might need to go through another lock straight away. Here at Cane Hill Locks, there are 16 back to back. Luckily, by boarding at Hilperton, we just about avoided having to start with these. We go in nowhere fast as we can. We 
going nowhere fast. When the gates opened, we got really lucky and found a place to moor up right outside the pub. What that was think? actually a lot harder than it looks. Oh, stressful. It was actually relief to get back on land. Yep. And we got lucky as well because people kind of let us through into the lock. Yeah, very Otherwise, lucky. we'd have been stuck for a very long time and just... They probably thought I didn't have long to live anyway. <laughs> get the old geezer through, at least there's a pub there, so you can have a pint. Yeah. Come on, I think we deserve it. Did you feel the stress today? Well, I, I felt the boats that we ran into. <laughs> and he bumped into like one or two boats. He bumped into like three boats. I could see the boats going into the edge, into the reeds where it's not meant to go, and into boats. And oh. By the last day, we'll be like all those other people on their last day that we saw that are like, oh yeah, bye, just sailing away. Day one, a little bit stressful. <laughs> After our well-deserved meal, it was time to get the kids' teeth brushed, read a story, and settle down for the night. Today, we were heading to Bath. We set off at 10.30 in the morning. To get there, there are two aqueducts to cross, and at least four hours of sailing. Despite a couple of collisions and near misses, our new captain was now getting into his stride and we were finally all able to relax. Getting the hang of it now, although I'm aware you've really got to have your wits about you, got to concentrate. Um, take your eye off the ball, three seconds, you could be heading towards something you're not intending to head towards. What kind of reactions do people have when you have to crash into them? I think they're quite, they're quite okay actually, generally warm and friendly, but then I could pretend it's, it's our first day. This is a high boat. To the river, to the river we go, leave our worries on the shore and drift away. On the river, on the river we know, sometimes the perfect words are never said. I spilled my coffee, I don't feel like talking, my worries just keep growing by the day. <sighs> this is the chilled end of the boat. It's baby Ducky. By mid-morning, we were ready to cross Avoncliff Aqueduct, which was built in 1805. From the riverbank, it looks like a normal bridge, but it's not cars using this impressive structure. It has some tricky right angles to sail through, so you might end up turning with a bump like us. Reverse! Reverse! Reverse, reverse! Once you're lined up, you can enjoy this unique canal crossing. To the river To the river we go Leave our worries on the shore and drift away We then motored on through the countryside for nearly an hour And we decided to moor up for a special lunch that Alicia had organised. Oh, wow, look at this, eh? this is like we're afternoon tea! Because we're having a very English holiday, oh. so I thought we needed a very English lunch. Oh, Ali! So wow, that nice. looks delicious, doesn't it? Yeah, wow. Wow. What a choice! So busy! Now we'd refuelled, we were ready to take on Dundas Aqueduct. It was made in the same year as Avoncliff and is almost identical. A bird's eye view reveals the beauty of what you're sailing over. Next, there were a couple of swing bridges to navigate through, but they were no match for our family.
cruised for a couple of hours into Bathampton. And 30 minutes later, we could see the splendour of Bath and were ready to moor up for the night. We got lucky again and managed to moor up at Darlington Wharf before the tunnels and the locks. That is the best parallel parking I've ever seen in my life. Look, inches. Here's the man who did it all. Oh, right yeah. here. Captain Bill. Oh, Captain yeah, yeah. Bill. Hi. Hi, hi, Captain. <laughs> From here, it was just a 20 minute walk into Bath. Mooring up here at 5.30 in the evening meant there wasn't enough time to explore this historic city. If you've never been, give yourself a full day here. We've made a video which we'll link to at the end. There was enough time though for us to treat ourselves to dinner and a pint. Yay! The next morning we were heading home. I could totally get used to um, waking up in the morning with birds singing and the movement of water and you bringing me that cup of tea this morning. That was, that was really nice. <laughs> If you're a confident narrowboater, you could navigate through six locks into the city centre and turn at the stunning Pulteney Bridge Weir. This takes around two hours in both directions though. The closest winding point, turning point to you and me, was a bit closer to Bath. Look at that! Now that is some good steering. And he didn't bum. I'm impressed. As we float on a breeze. Look at that. It's just enough adventure to get your heart going, but not too much to make you sweat. That's how you do a turn, folks. Discovered this new life. Did you ever think on day one of this that you'd be able to drink a cup of tea while driving? No, I didn't think you ever thought, I'll be honest with you. Is it actually feeling more enjoyable now? Oh yeah, definitely. I'm more relaxed. And if I do go into something or if this doesn't quite go right, I'm more relaxed and I can think better. Whereas day one, that was um, panic mode. The only thing to be careful of, we have been told, don't go too fast, is it can take the moorings out because you peg a lot of the stuff in. We now had to do two days of sailing in one. Dad made the aqueducts look easy this time and we all got to enjoy the home stretch. Living the life of Riley. Can't hear the engine. It just feels like it's just going on autopilot. On the back, feels the opposite. When we got to Bradford on Avon, it was our turn to do the lock. We were now just an hour away from the marina and the end of our trip. I really, really enjoyed it. It was a total bucket list trip for me. Ever since having a walk on the canal, I thought that just seems like the most relaxing and beautiful little holiday you can do. And it was just enough adventure for me. I'd say it's been challenging. It's been an experience. It's been good fun. It's been hilarious. <laughs> Once you get over the fact that you're a little bit embarrassed that you've not done this before and you realise no one really minds if you bump into a boat or you push off a boat, um, then, then it's really nice. I think a week would be ideal, really. 
from because you're just getting into it after three days really aren't yeah. you thing and then you go further and see more can't you I did think when we were going to first do this we were going to just do it as a family of five and I don't think you could, not with someone not this possible. young. We are so glad that we brought the grandparents to help. I really appreciated them. I hope they enjoyed it. <laughs> it's been lovely. Yeah, real sense of um, yeah, being together, being family, bonding with the children more. The kids have got new memories with their grandparents as well. Um, and I think you get to know each other even better. And after mm -hmm. the kind of years we've all just had, it's kind of nice to regroup and appreciate everyone again, isn't it? But we'll never forget this. <laughs> never forget it. Again, big thanks to ABC Boat Hire for letting us try out canal boating for the very first time. Make sure you check them out if you want to do a similar trip anywhere in the country. We did it! Yes. <laughs> a memorable trip for so many reasons. Where should we try and live the life of Riley next? You choose. Pick a video. Remember to check out our guide to Bath and Robbie's interview and a full review. Yeah.